Hello again and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the stages of cervical cancer. For those of you who are interested or are starting to go under this whole process and everything like that. Cervical cancers are put into stages. There's stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, and stage 4. The lower the number, the smaller the cancer. The higher the number, the larger the number, the bigger the tumor and the cancer is. Stage 1 and stage 2, I believe, are also put into size differences in A and B. When you have stage 1, I'll do it this way so you can see a little bit better. Stage 1, here's the cervix in here. A cancer, it goes down a little bit and it's no more than about 3 millimeters wide and less than 7 millimeters deep. And stage 1A, 2. So stage 1, it's A, meaning it goes a little bit up and down, but it's 2, which means it's even bigger. It's, it could be around 3 to 5 millimeters thick and no more than about 7 centimeters long. And it sometimes can go into your little tube area. With stage 1B, the numbers get a little bit bigger. Stage 1B, here's your your tube is not affected. It mostly starts going this way. So in your cervix, if you have stage 1B1, your tumor is less than four centimeters. So if you have 1B1, your tumor is less than four centimeters thick in your cervix. If you have 1B2, it's larger than four centimeters. And then when you go to the stage two, well, stage two is when the tumor goes outside your cervix. And when it goes into your tube, it's further down. With stage two, if stu stage two A, it takes up a larger amount of your tube. And then stage two B, it's going outside of your cervix. So it's going into the surrounding walls. And then stage three, it goes even more. So I think in stage three, it can take up like two thirds of your, your tube. And then with stage three B, it's going further out. So it might be going to your lymph nodes. Is it hitting further than stage two? And then with stage four, there's a lot more involvement. Stage four A, this is where four, stage four A is going this way. So it's going out to your ureter, it can go out to your bowels. It can actually go into your bowels and cause obstructions. You have a lot more pain and things like that. With stage 4B, that's when you have metastases. That's when they find it in your lungs, in your brain, your liver, your breast. When I had my PET scan done initially, it showed a spot in my liver and they were a little concerned about that, but my doctor said she didn't think it was anything because it didn't make sense going from my cervix to my liver. She said usually it goes to the lung area first. So just to be careful, they went ahead and did a biopsy of my liver and it turned out to be fine, but they couldn't ignore it. So I could have gone from stage one up to stage four if it was involved in my liver as well. Thankfully, it didn't have that happen, so I was brought back down to stage 1B2. When I first found out that I had cancer, they told me it was just adenocarcinoma in situ. That was after my colposcopy and my biopsies. That's what they told me, it was adenocarcinoma in situ, which is sort of like stage zero. Some people say it's not cancer yet, but let's just face it. If you're told you have adenocarcinoma in situ, you're going to think I have cancer. And that's what I did. So then I had to get a cold knife colonization to try to get rid of that in situ cancer. But during the cold knife, they found out that actually the cancer was invasive already. So that was not what I wanted to hear. 
and that's not what they were expecting to see because after the treatment with the cold knife, you have a 95 to 98% chance of being perfectly fine. That's all you need to have done. I was that three to 5% of the patients that aren't fine. So my odds not been good to me. So then I had to get treatment to take care of that. With types so either of the 1As or the 1B1, they can usually end up doing surgery. And you can talk to your doctor about what kind of surgery to do. They can do surgery, depends on if you want children or not, and what you want to have done. There are different options. The best treatment, the one that's going to take it all away, you hope, is having a hysterectomy. That doesn't necessarily have to be a full hysterectomy. It doesn't have to be a radical hysterectomy. You would need to talk to your doctor and see what they th think and what they say. They're the expert. They're the ones that deal with it on a regular basis. If you want to have children, they might be, okay, let's just try and doing a second leap or a second cold knife and seeing if we can get cl clean edges. There are things that can be done, hopefully, depending on your cancer, and depending on your case. Every case is different. The type, one of the type of surgeries is where they just take out your cervix. You can actually still have children if you, not ha if you don't have your cervix anymore. It's more complicated. You can't have babies the old-fashioned way, and you can't deliver them the old-fashioned way either. So there are things that are involved, but it still will allow you to have children. Is it right for everybody? Depends. Depends on what's going on with you and your body. Not all cancers are created equal. If you haven't already, subscribe, the like button, make some comments. Let's get this party started. Well, thank you for joining me and I hope you have a great week. And until then, I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and know you're not alone. Thanks, bye.